Welcome to UND Insider Weekly. I'm Tim Hennessy and the panel looking a little bit different this week. Look at all just staunch like that. Gary's <laughs> <laughs> here for Corey's here from WDAZ, Mitch Wignes from UND Athletics, and of course the mainstay is Brad Schlossman down on the end. He is the veteran. Paul Ralston, Tom Miller on assignment at the Cole Center in Wisconsin for uh, the basketball game with North Dakota and Wisconsin. Gentlemen, it was uh, it wasn't really a bombshell, I guess, uh, when uh, uh, Brian Faison announced that he was not uh, uh, that he was letting go Chris Musman as a football coach uh, at UND. Yet I think for a lot of people, uh, not so much a surprise, but for me, kind of sadness that anybody would lose their job, I guess. But I think in the end, uh, you have to look forward and you have to somehow get get past this, find somebody that will come in here and uh, rejuvenate the program. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Dan? Yeah, I agree with you. This was my only year covering UND football and there were some high expectations coming into this season. I think that win over Montana last season uh, really made the summer, uh, uh, you could say there was a lot of anticipation coming into this season. You get that first win over, over Valpo and you have that tough schedule with SDSU, Montana, Montana State and being on the field for that SDSU game as soon as the team went down by two touchdowns, everybody left. And that was the sign for me saying that there is a very short lease for Chris Musman, and those blowout losses certainly did not help his case. Right, it's never any different in a situation like this when they talk about a national search, and that is uh, recruiting. I obviously comes to the forefront, doesn't it, as far it, as uh, selection of a new coach? Yeah, and, and that's going to be a key job of the new coach, and he's starting behind the eight ball right away with... Um, you know, he's going to have a month and a half, essentially, to put together his first recruiting class. So that'll be an interesting task for the new coach. They're going to need to find someone that can recruit uh, really well to get some of the uh, top athletes to, to come here. And we all know that the big sky is not going to be easy for UND, a uh, league to play in. So to compete with some of those uh, upper echelon teams, they definitely need to have the players to do so. All right, so stay tuned on the UND football front, folks. Women's hockey, they lose 6-1 on Saturday afternoon at Ritter Arena to Minnesota. Minnesota's winning streak goes to 62 games. And then uh, UND turns it around on Sunday, comes back for a 3-2 to two win to snap that streak and, and get a WCHA split, probably just as important, although a lot of people putting a lot of significance on, the, on breaking the, uh, the winning streak for Minnesota. Your thoughts on that, Brad? Well, they finally, uh, they've been so close to beating Minnesota several times in this stretch, and uh, to finally do it has to give the team some confidence to know that they can do it. Um, the, the three goals were scored by rookies. The goaltender was a rookie, so um, that's encouraging that the, the young players weren't uh, intimidated at all by going in there or uh, by playing a team with such a lengthy winning streak. Follow up to Brad, yeah, the, the freshman class I think is unbelievable. Um, it'd be interesting to talk to Coach Adelson and get his thoughts on if he thought that they would contribute this much uh, here in the first part of the season. Like what you guys said, the freshman class all scoring goals, you know, this program has a lot to look forward to in the future. Mm -hmm. Brad, is it, it was an entirely different series, I think, from the last uh, couple of times that Minnesota and North Dakota played, and I think the coaches made that point, the players made that point. These were entirely different teams. I, I know you weren't there, but from people you talked to, what was the feel of the competition between the two? Well, uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, high-end players that weren't playing in uh, this series. Uh, Amanda Kessel and uh, Nora Ratu for Minnesota are two uh, names that you know, we're key in the series. The Lamaru twins are gone, but still, when you watch the series, there's so much high-end talent out there that these could be the two best teams in the country this year. If not, they're the two of the top four teams. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, maybe the top three teams are Minnesota, Wisconsin, and UND, and they get Wisconsin this week, and so uh, it's not going to get any easier. But um, the, the talent was... Uh, right up there and I, I think we saw that this weekend. The men returned to the Ralph this past weekend to face Minnesota Duluth in NCHC play. Uh, they win 4-2 on Friday night with an empty net goal and I think just uh, really the tank was empty on Saturday night in a lot of respects. I think they maybe had some penalties that uh, were uh, ill-advised so to speak from players who don't kill penalties putting those guys out on the ice even more. Uh, Saturday night didn't go well but 
uh, I think getting a split after what they'd gone through injury-wise and with the illness, I think uh, probably, Dan, was, uh, was a good sign. Yeah, and it was nice to see them get some power play goals, too, against the top penalty kill in, team in the country. Mike, what you said, going through the illness back from Omaha, the injuries, uh, you know, Coach Hackstall won't make any excuses, but certainly if there's any team to have an excuse, it's UND right now. Well, I mean, they, they, they don't want to make any excuses, but I mean, uh, when you look at it honestly, it, it, it impacts. You, you don't have a guy like Brendan O'Donnell. You essentially don't have Mark McMillan because he could barely skate out there. Um, you have guys coming back from the flu. Um, they don't want to use it as an excuse, and it's not, I suppose, but I mean, it's just the truth that that will affect the team. I think the, uh, the offense produced by the defense, uh, I don't think is a surprise. I think the way the game has gone, that, uh, and, and we see it, I think every weekend, uh, it's tougher and tougher down low for anybody to possess the puck, anybody to get good scoring chances. If you don't use those guys significantly, you're not gonna get any scoring chances, huh? Yeah, overall health of this team too. I mean, from the decor as well, they're gonna need scoring from those guys just because you know some key guys are out right now, so. And those guys are really dynamic back there too. Yeah. You have some uh, high-end players that can do the scoring. So I think that's probably something that uh, Coach Haxtell is happy about that they, he knew before the season that these guys could add offense and the fact that they are doing it like he thought they could I think has got to be an encouraging sign. Team goes to Boston University this weekend for a couple of non-conference games before returning home against St. Lawrence. The women's basketball team opened their schedule, beat South Dakota 65-61 on Sunday after a couple of rough outings, uh, well, for the most part at Iowa State, Northern Iowa, not so bad. But that win against South Dakota, Mitch, was, uh, uh, I think it really showed something for the squad as they were down at halftime, yeah. and then they really just shut the door on the Coyotes in the second half, didn't they? Yeah, I was really encouraged by the second half of that, of that game. They came back out of the locker room, played really well defensively. They just went to a different level. They had 10 block shots in that game, and obviously the health of Alyssa Walls really helped this team. Uh, last year she didn't play a whole lot. And when she did play, when she played more than 10 minutes, they were 7-1 and one last year. So certainly she's a difference maker. And she played well on, on Sunday, and they were able to win. Yeah, what did you see? Yeah, it was nice that UND shut down the Summit's top scorer in C-Camp. And I thought defensively, especially in the second half, they played very well. When you're trying to get your feet underneath you as an offense and getting a whistle wall back, sometimes it's hard to produce points, especially easy early in the season. And to see the defensive side of the basketball for Coach Brewster play so well, very encouraging going forward. I want Brad's take on the women's basketball team. Uh, <laughs> point guard play is essential, yeah. and they're getting good play from uh, Leah Zabwa. Yeah, they're taking care of the basketball. That's been key as well. What do they got coming up, Mitch? Uh, they've got Jamestown. Uh, they've got a weird stretch here. They only play one game over the next 16 days. So they got Jamestown the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and then they don't play again until December 4. So actually talking to Coach Brewster, they're happy with uh, being able to take some time right now. They got some, some injuries as well. 